So in this study, we took it a step further, showing that an implantable device stimulating daily uh, can change the course of disease of the EAE subacute model. Now, this is a more MS-like model where the, the animals, where the rodents are induced to develop disease through an immunization with myelin basic protein and Freud's adjuvant, which activates the immune cell to specifically attack myelin within the central nervous system. So the, the rats here were implanted with um, miniature vagus nerve stimulators uh, under the skin, uh, which are programmed remotely uh, with an iPad. After the rats have healed, uh, the, they are then immunized. And after about seven or eight days, they have subclinical disease where the immune cells begin to attack the nervous system and they start getting clinical symptoms around day eight. So on day seven, when the disease was, was semi-established or still subclinical, we turn the device on, it would stimulate uh, daily um, at one milliamp for 60 seconds uh, per dose. And we stimulated from, again, from day seven until day 21 after the um, after the clinical symptoms have, uh, have ceased. And we had several different, uh, we looked at several different groups. Our primary comparators were all implanted animals. Half of them were turned on and half of them were not. We also had a disease control, which was immunized. And so they, these animals got disease and we were able to see whether the implantation of the sham device um, had any effect on the disease course itself. We also had a naive control. Um, for this model, we also used as a positive control, a clinic clinically approved disease modifying drug uh, known as teraflutamide, um, as well as a vehicle control for the teraflutamide, which is uh, given by oral gavage. What we saw was that there was no difference between the sham device and the disease control animals. That is that both, both groups of animals uh, got a typical course of, of uh, EAE where they became uh, parallel successively from the tip of the tail to the front limbs, uh, which then resolved over the course of a few days. Um, but strikingly, uh, when the device was turned on and the vagus nerve was activated, we saw a significant reduction in the disease burden of these animals. Now, we looked at a few different lenses. One was the area under the curve, the area being the clinical score on the y-axis versus uh, the day after the when the, the animals were symptomatic. We also looked at the maximum clinical score achieved, um, as well as the number of symptomatic days. And um, we looked, we then looked um, what's going on in the spinal cord at the day of peak disease. To do this, uh, we took histological sections uh, of the spinal cord at peak disease and stained with H and E. And what we saw was a restriction of immunocytes going in uh, within the vagus nerve stimulated group as compared to the sham stimulated group. Uh, in addition, we saw far fewer lesions within both gray matter and white matter within the vagus nerve stimulated groups than in the sham group as well. Comparing with the, the teraflutamide, we had a we saw a dose response where lower doses of teraflutamide did not work as well as high doses. For our teraflutamide positive control, we gavage with a dose a dose response with zero, which is the vehicle, one and three milligrams per kilograms per day of teraflutamide. Three milligrams per kilograms per day is greater than the allosteric equivalent in humans that's that's allowed. Um, and what we saw when comparing the VNS group with the high dose teraflutamide was that they 
superimposed, meaning that vagus nerve stimulation in this model uh, worked as well as the clinically approved drug. Um, another interesting aspect that we saw uh, to investigate the mode of action of how this is working was at early time points, two days after stimulating the vagus nerve for the first time, we looked with flow cytometry at infiltration of interferon, po interferon gamma positive pathogenic T cells that have infiltrated into the spinal cord and saw a complete abrogation of infiltrating cells within the vagus nerve stimulation group. What this indicates is that daily stimulation of the vagus nerve significantly ameliorated the disease burden in the subacute rat EAE by reducing the disease severity, um, also the number of symptomatic days. Vagus nerve stimulation reduced the inflammatory cell infiltration into the central nervous system. Vagus nerve stimulation reduced the EAE clinical severity to a similar degree to high-dose teraflutamid, and a single dose of vagus nerve stimulation dramatically reduced the pathogenic Th1 cell population in the spinal cord. So the implications of this study is that these are the first demonstration of subacute vagus nerve stimulation reducing disease pathology in a rodent model of multiple sclerosis. The profound effect on preventing pathogenic immune cell entry into the CNS and protection from disease burden highlights the early potential for this non-pharmaceutical therapy as a novel approach for the treatment of multiple sclerosis and other neuroinflammatory diseases. The next steps for this therapy is to translate them into a clinical study, which will be able to first prove the principle that we are able to enhance remyelination um, and improve function in, uh, in human patients of multiple sclerosis using this non-pharmacological therapy.